heal your skin from within. Depixin helps keep you one step ahead of eczema with clearer skin and less itch. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixin. Hello, lovers. The next chapter of Sex in the City begins. We're with Sarah Jessica Parker at her New York premiere. Thank you so much, Melora Harden, Aww. for helping us out today. Now, you. remember, you promised that you're going to come back to announce where Thunder, Hunter, and me land. Yes, okay? I am. All right. I am, for All sure. Right. Yeah. And we leave you now with Mark Hamill and the news that Star Wars fans may not want to hear. Oh I'm sorry, y'all. Take care. Good night, everyone. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow. We have seen Luke in The Mandalorian. Is it time for him to meet Boba Fett? <laughs> I had a, such a feeling of, of completion. You know, I, it, it was over. This is a whole new era for the Star Wars universe. But last night, Mark returned to his Star Wars roots for Make-A-Wish Greater Los Angeles, Orange County's Galaxy of Wishes presented by Disneyland Resort. It's all about making dreams come true, right? That's what we do every day. I had the privilege of hosting the event inside Star Wars Galaxy's Edge that brought out R&B legends. Happening now. Bear County with a brand new announcement today, the results of a study on rising domestic violence numbers. I'm Courtney Friedman. Coming up, what they plan to do about it. It's been a month since the San Antonio rapper was gunned down here on the west side and his family is still desperate for justice. We'll have the latest in the investigation coming up. And get ready for big time temperature whiplash. I'll tell you more about it in a bit. News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, the numbers are staggering. Domestic violence numbers have almost doubled here in Bear County since 2015, and county agencies are admitting they're struggling just to keep up. And that's exactly why they've been working for months on a comprehensive plan to tackle this issue. Courtney Friedman was there this afternoon when they announced that plan. She joins us now live from the courthouse downtown. Courtney. Yeah, well, that press conference just ended about an hour ago, packed full of information on this plan. It involved the county commissioners, the judges, and the district attorney. They each are going to send in separate proposals in a couple of weeks, detailing the resources they say they each need to put a dent in this massive number of domestic violence cases. We heard a lot of impassioned speeches today from each of them calling domestic violence what it is, a public health crisis. This court has no patience, has no tolerance, has no appetite for the large dismissal rate that we have here in Bear County. The huge holistic strategy includes an overview of the current caseloads, services to assist and protect victims, and a new approach to monitor abusers. The DA's office is requesting $3.1 million to add more prosecutors, investigators, and advocates. Resources DA Joe Gonzalez says are absolutely necessary to deal with the misdemeanor criminal court cases backlog that we were locked down for 14 months during the pandemic. We were not able to resolve a lot of the family violence cases that were set for trial. Uh, there was no incentive to, to resolve these cases until now. The, the courts are asking for resources to help more equally distribute these cases throughout the courts, saying the burden is falling too much on specific courts who can't handle this load. The Bear County Family Justice Center is requesting $327,000 for programs that help high-risk victims, which, believe it or not, is now 64% of their entire clientele. And there's another proposal to buy new technology that would alert victims with protective orders when their perpetrator is close by. On the phone app, they will receive a message that the uh, perpetrator is within a certain distance of them. And this, this watch is worn by the uh, defendant all the time. And, and if it's cut, they're notified. Judge Nelson Wolf is calling a special session. Otherwise, they would be meeting in January. But that special session is going to be December 21st, where they're going to hear all of these final proposals and take some action. Up until then, we will be bringing you more detailed breakdowns of all of these proposals, because we know this is a lot of information and how it's going to affect you, the taxpayer. For now, we're live at the courthouse downtown. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Clearly, something needs to be done. Thank you, Courtney. A fired Bear County jailer could face criminal charges for an alleged assault on an inmate. Termina termination paperwork states last December, Wesley D. Giuseppe got into a fight with an inmate, a fight so severe the inmate suffered a fracture to the base of his skull.
Now we're learning about inconsistencies in his initial report and video footage of the fight. D. Giuseppe's claims that the inmate started the fight by punching him in the face, inconsistent with video footage of the fight. Several charges were filed against D. Giuseppe last year, but the district attorney's office has not formally charged him yet. The DA's office says the case is still pending investigation for review. Someone else lost their job as well for allegedly stealing from kids. Mm -hmm. It happened at a Southside daycare. Yeah, 45 year old Virginia Vela Torres worked there, but this afternoon San Antonio police took her into custody. She's accused of stealing bracelets from a three year old and also two four year old kids. Investigators say that she then took that jewelry to a pawn shop. Now Torres lost her job. The daycare fired her and now she's facing theft charges. Now, two women survived an early morning crash, but now one of them has a much bigger problem, and that's whether she's going to go to jail. San Antonio police are trying to figure out whether the driver was intoxicated when she hit another vehicle on Loop 410 around 2 o'clock this morning. She crashed her vehicle into a barrier at the San Pedro exit. Firefighters pulled her out, then police took her into custody. By the way, the other driver in this case wasn't hurt. Tonight, agony, still no answers for the family of a man who was killed last month on the west side. Yeah, people told police they heard multiple gunshots the night that 27 year old Daniel Flores was killed, but still police haven't arrested anyone. Our Jaffney Gray spoke with the victim's mother who has a message for her son's killer. Who's the baby? He was a father of two. He loved them wholeheartedly. They meant everything to him. And a well-known San Antonio rapper who went by Yonzo de Youngin. AKA Yons. Yons? <laughs> Yons, like, and I said, is that Yons because you yawn so much? 27-year-old Daniel Flores was known for his music, but to his mother, Maria Ibarra, he was known for what he was outside of the studio. He had um, the ability to make you feel very loved with his hugs. November 7th, San Antonio police filled the 300 block of Jesse Avenue where Flores' lifeless body was found. Police believe he was a victim of a homicide. Ibarra's first prayer when she got the call after church. For God to carry me, even though I want to break down, but I can't. Still, a memorial sits in the location where Flores was gunned down. His mother says to this day, she's still filled with so many unanswered questions. It's beyond what anybody can describe. But I, I find strength in the Lord and the heaven, in my Heavenly Father. San Antonio police haven't released any suspect information or a motive behind the shooting. But if you have any information that could help with this case, you're urged to call police. And I want them to know who I am because I'm not going to back down. I'll be here to get justice. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. A tragic mistake or criminal? Those are the arguments that jurors heard in the trial of former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter. Attorneys made their opening arguments today. Potter now charged in the shooting death of Dante Wright. He died after Potter shot him during a traffic stop over an expired tag. The officer claimed that she made a mistake and thought that she had grabbed her taser. She was trained to be aware of the differences between her gun and her taser. She was also trained about the risks of pulling the wrong weapon. She made a mistake. This was an accident. She's a human being. Now Potter's charged with first and second degree manslaughter and she is expected to take the stand in her case. A Seguin police officer shot several times in the line of duty earlier this year receiving a special gift from one organization dedicated to helping our men and women in blue. Yeah, the group Q for the blue gave Seguin Sergeant Brad Flippin a check this morning. If you remember, he was shot in October during a domestic disturbance call. Members from Q for the blue wanted to do something to help him. And today we finally heard from the officer for the first time since he was hurt. Listen. You know, I got shot. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to get better. and I'm going to go back to work. I didn't expect anything from anybody um, you know it's it's very it's very humbling coming from people that I don't even know you know um, I've gotten gifts from all over the country letter 
In today's check an undisclosed amount. The organization said they hope it will help Sergeant Flippin buy Christmas gifts or help in any way it can. As for the 56 year old suspect who shot Flippin, he's facing several charges, including attempted capital murder of a police officer. A lot warmer today than what we had the past few days, at least for afternoon temperatures. Let's take a look at the almanac data here in San Antonio. We started off at 45 degrees, then by the afternoon, 78, so nearing 80 degrees, and we're going to continue to warm up over the next couple of days. Temperatures for the most part in the 70s across our area, even Windcrest 72, Canyon Lake now at 75. So we go through the evening. Clear for now, temperatures briefly dropping into the upper 50s by about midnight, and then higher humidity and fog rolls back into town. Spring-like for a few days, then the whiplash comes from a cold front. We'll talk to you more about that in just a bit. Now let's go to Sam with the check on our roads. Thank you very much, Adam. Looking at 410 at Evers. Traffic uh, flowing there, but uh, moving so far. But we do have some issues not too far from there. Let's take a wider view here and then go to uh, the travel times and the maps. A few crashes on the north side. So it's taking you 11 minutes to get from 281 to I-10 and a crash also loop 410 at Sinclair Road. Ursula, Stephanie. A local public university with a multi-million dollar shortfall. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with some of the stories that we are working on for 6 o'clock. Texas A&M San Antonio falling $4 million short. Faculty concerned about how much they don't know about what happened here. Our Garrett Berger tracking this story for us just moments ago. He talked with university leadership. They're giving him an explanation as to how this happened. He's putting together all of those details. We'll have that explanation coming up at six. Plus, even a San Antonio institution hasn't been immune to the impacts of the pandemic. Ray's Drive-In. They went a long time without being able to serve customers inside. Dine-In is back but now they're dealing with staff shortages and steep inflation. How the restaurant is handling those challenges and what they're saying about how that will or won't be affecting customers. And the need is great for so many people this time of year. How San Antonians are helping spread joy to young refugees from Afghanistan who are now here in the Alamo City for the holidays. Those stories and more coming your way at 6 o'clock. Stephania and Steve. All right, Maida, thank you. Now, new at five city council members have a lot of questions when it comes to the proposed rate increase with CPS Energy. So today they got to ask those questions directly to interim president Rudy Garza. He says that the increase will mainly go towards paying off debt, investing back into their system, and also giving the city of San Antonio their revenue cut. However, council members are pushing for a more equitable pay increase structure. Does this rate increase do harm to my constituents um, or am I doing harm by not, uh, you know, uh, giving you the okay? Are we really doing the most critical things over the next five years and still looking at the affordability rate across this entire city? Also, are we protected in case there's another freeze? All right, well, City Council is going to vote on that proposal on January 13th. All right, so coming up, do yourself a favor. Have you checked your fridge? Because there's usually a lot of food there during the holidays. Here's the thing, though. Crowding can cause your food to spoil. So how do you keep your fridge neat and your food safe? And breast cancer, one of the most common cancers in women. But there are things you can do to help prevent the disease. We're going to talk about some of those things coming up next. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Pam Hospitals. Hi, my name is Leslie Rodriguez. I'm an Air Force veteran who completed two tours in Iraq, and I personally have the experience of being overseas during the holidays, and I know how difficult that can be being away from your family. And we just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, and that we are thinking of you. It's the second most common cancer among women in the U.S., so how exactly do you prevent it? It's something that we spoke with researchers about today during day two of the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. One oncologist told us that diet and exercise are key, and then she explained why. Listen. One of the things that increases our risk is, is higher exposure of estrogen during our lifetime. So what that means is women that have um, that carry a few extra pounds, they actually have a higher um, estrogen level, and that increases the risk of getting breast cancers. 
Now, we also spoke with Dr. Virginia Kaklamani about early detection and the ways that women of different age groups can prevent breast cancer. We're going to have more details on that at 6 p.m. All right, you know it's the holidays when the fridge is on overload between extra guests, extra ingredients for holiday dishes, thawing a ham or turkey, and of course, leftovers. The refrigerator can be a recipe for disaster. Between on your side's Marilyn Moritz on keeping your food organized and safe. Pull things out of the chest freezer and then I actually move them over to the downstairs refrigerator to start the process of thawing them. When it comes to food and fridge organization, Paul Hope has a system and some advice to help you get ready for big holiday gatherings. A week or two before the big holiday meal, I like to go through the fridge, stop buying new groceries, and try to use up things I already have. It's also a good time to throw out anything that's expired or purge things you know you're not going to use before the end of the year. Adjusting your shelves can help accommodate big or tall dishes. On the top shelf, you want to keep raw, ready-to-eat foods, things like prepped salads or desserts, anything that you don't want to come into contact with foods on the other shelves. The middle, that's the prepared dish zone, stuff that's covered and ready to be heated. Thawing or raw meats go on the bottom. You don't want them dripping on other foods. Less perishable things like relishes and sauces work for the side shelves. It's good. And for leftovers, there's a strategy for those too. Break them down into meal-sized portions and store them in shallow covered containers. Anything you won't eat in three to four days, freeze it. To preserve freshness and quality of foods, you really want to keep things airtight, so use products dedicated for that, like freezer bags. And if you get short on fridge space, you can always break out the portable cooler. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take it outside right now. We're getting a live view here over the San Antonio Botanical Gardens, where I believe in 14 minutes, Lightscape is about to start. 14 minutes. You have it yes, down to do. the exact moments when they flip the switch out of the Botanical Gardens. This is true. I'm yes. impressed. I love the lights. Yeah. Much different day, though, today than yesterday. Uh, now it's down to 13 minutes and 30 seconds, just so Okay, you know. good. I'm glad <laughs> we have more than one. <laughs> We're sticklers here, Steve. Yeah, I can tell you guys are very exact. That's right. Where do you fit into this equation? I, I am the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for some a temperature whiplash, weather whiplash, whatever you want to call it in the days ahead. Record challenging warmth the next couple of days, then a strong cold front. And we do have a space station flyover this evening. Let's get you ready for it. This starts at 6.53 p.m. Look off to the northwest. It'll last about six minutes. Okay, 6.53 p.m. Looking to the northwest. Here's a look at our satellite data, and we should have pretty good visibility. Uh, really not much in terms of clouds, some high thin clouds off to the northwest of town, but that's it. So overall, I do anticipate good viewing of this space station flyover. What time? 6.53 p.m. looking off to the northwest and is only going to last six minutes. There is a disturbance still off to the west of us. This disturbance uh, near Southern California is throwing some clouds across North Texas. It's going to team up with another disturbance coming in from the Pacific Northwest to swing a cold front through our area by the pre dawn hours on Saturday with it only about a 10 to 20% chance of a few showers. So rain chances still looking pretty bleak out there. You look at the sky conditions again, some of those clouds off in the distance, 74 right now, dew point of 52. That number is rising and it's going to continue to do so and it's going to get stickier and muggier outside. Even just overnight, first thing tomorrow morning, you'll notice the stickiness. Let's start with temperatures. Right now we're in the 70s, Stinson 79, Bernie 72, 72 in Holotus and Castroville at 79. Still 80 though in Catula and Del Rio checking in at 81. This is what we're expecting tomorrow afternoon. Widespread 80s and even 80 in Kerrville and Canyon Lake up to 86 in Pleasanton. Del Rio Eagle Pass about 85 the high temperature in and around San Antonio. Uh, lower 80s for a good portion of us, but Leon Springs 80. Hello to maybe about 79. New Braunfels 82. So temperatures on the upswing again. It's only getting warmer and the record high the next couple of days is 85 degrees. Notice we're not going to be very far from that. 82 tomorrow, 84 on Friday and then boom, we bottom out. And by this weekend, we're looking at high temperatures, afternoon temperatures right near 60 degrees. That's our brief little cooling trend because then we warm back up and really the overall outlook over the next two weeks favors above average temperature. So this is one little dip that's going to happen this weekend. 
We talked about dew points, they're on the rise. The wind is starting to kick in, coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. That's increasing the moisture, uh, moisture out there. And here's our future cast showing that by midnight and a little bit thereafter, dew points are back in the lower 60s. So that's when you start to feel the humidity out there. And first thing tomorrow morning, dew points well into the 60s. So you'll notice that mugginess the next couple of days. It gets swept away for the upcoming weekend. And also that humidity, it's going to lead to some areas of fog. So tomorrow morning, fog for the morning commute lower 60s by the afternoon sunny and 82 feeling spring like this weekend. We talked about those afternoons near 60. Look at that morning on Sunday mid 30s around San Ooh. Antonio. Yay. But before that happens, those temperatures are definitely looking up and we need the same thing to happen with the Spurs. Come yeah. on. Well, they have a five game homestand, which they didn't start out well in, but that's a chance for them to recover from back to back losses. The question is, will they? When we come back, we'll tell you what one of the big problems were last night in the loss of the Knicks and the Texans cut Cunningham. That's right. Their star linebacker coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs started a new streak, only it's a losing streak after dropping their last game on their road trip in Phoenix and last night to the Knicks in back-to-back -back games. Spurs got off to a great start, though. Keldon Johnson gets it ahead to Lonnie Walker the fourth, lobs it to DeJounte Murray for the monster alley-oop. Final seconds of the first quarter, Doug McDermott throws up the off-balance three at the buzzer. We're tied at 28 all. Problems compounded, though, in the second quarter as Derek Rose hits the three, pushed the Knicks out to an 11-point lead, and then Keldon steps on Jakob Pertl's foot, and he heads to the locker room after rolling his right ankle. He would return briefly before he was done for the night. The Knicks, by the way, would expand that lead to 16. When this happens, DeJounte Murray comes up with a big time steal, gets it ahead to Joshua Primo. When Primo leaves it for Murray and the bucket, Derek White would score season high 26, including this three to cut the lead down to 10. But RJ Barrett would drop 32 on the Spurs, and New York wins on the road 121 to 109. I think they made about 17 threes. Uh, and in today's NBA, if you make that many threes, you've got a great chance to win the basketball game, which means your defense and rebounding has to be almost perfect. Uh, our rebounding was poor. They really kicked our butt. Uh, you know, guys are going to make threes some games. Uh, and they made more than they're used to making. Uh, but the boards, you know, 21 points off 17 offensive rebounds was the killer. There you go. Now, next up, it'll be Denver tomorrow night at 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans have cut linebacker Zach Cunningham after suspending him for the 31 to nothing blowout loss to the Indianapolis Colts, showing up late for a scheduled COVID-19 test. But what makes this decision even worse is that Cunningham just signed a four-year, $58 million contract extension after leading the league in tackles in 2020, leaving the Texans with nearly $13 million cap hit in 2022. Cunningham started seven of the 10 games this season, was second on the team in tackles with 67. Head coach David Culley was asked today why. We got standards and I didn't feel like that those standards had been met consistently. And I felt like I made a decision that was best for our team. This is about the team. It's not about any individuals. It wasn't tough at all. You know, it's about the team. It's not about any individual player. And the one thing that we always talk about is, is that it's not necessarily trying to be the best player on the team, but being the best player for the team. And that's our motto. All right, and congratulations to UTSA's Jeff Trailer and Sincere McCormick. Uh, coach Trailer is the Conference USA Coach of the Year. Sincere McCormick is the Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year. Well, those are well-deserved. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Still monitoring a crash on the east side, Loop 410 southbound, just south of Rigsby. So that's causing some major delays on 410. 54 minutes now from I-35 to I-37. Also some delays downtown, Adam. All right, Sam, morning fog likely to affect the commute the next couple of days, Thursday and Friday. In low to mid 80s for highs then this weekend, closer to 60. So big temperature changes on the way. All right, well, that's it. Thank you for watching the news at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.